difficult with it. It's kind of like, oh yeah, you know, I've broken my nose like nine times. <laughs> and, you know, if you have different um, um, different kinds of epilepsy, you know, um, temporal lobe, you know, you kind of generally fall forward, you know, with different mm. things and um, because basically that's like tense, relax, tense, relax. But there's also different strains of epilepsy where it's just relax, which you fall forward. And then there's the type where everything just stiffens. And, and so you don't do the convulsion, you just stiffen, so then you fall backwards. Mm -hmm. So people either have like injuries to the back of the head or the front of their head, or you know, so it just depends. Like, you know, people are like, you know, I've broken my nose, they've got like scars here and it's all kind of, you know, this one builder was just like, yeah, I just like fall off, you know, scuffed, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. In relation to Lily and her drive to find her brother, um, yeah. what do you think her reason is for doing that? Do you think it's um, a sense of principle or security? Um, what, what do you think is a motivating force? Or, you know, force? I think um, she's trying to feel whole again. And I don't know, I think she doesn't know how to feel like that. And I think she puts it uh, on an exterior kind of entity. You know, because yeah. she loses, you know, someone that was so supportive and kind of was her kind of angel and saviour when she was a kid, like, protected her. And then she's in this vulnerable place without him. And trying to be a young woman and grow and kind of, even without epilepsy, it's difficult. You know, you, for everyone, you go through poos, it's like, who am I? How do I fit into this world as not being a child and an adult? And so I think she puts this significance on finding her brother and being like, you know, when I find him, I'll feel whole. I just need to get him and then I'm going to be fine. And I think that's the beautiful thing when she does find him. And it's like, well, this wasn't like the kind of like skipping through the park moment that I imagined. And then she has to find within herself whatever that represented. And I think that's the journey to her you know, being uh, accepting of herself within within the world and I think she stops fighting it then because I think she thinks the world's against her and she has to find this thing but really, you know, she, she has to find peace within herself with it. I mean, did you think that regards to that, actually, as part of, I don't know, struggling in terms of like, filters, like, there's a filter of medication, yeah. the filter of nostalgia, maybe a certain sense of idealism with the homeless girl and things and the faith in her, yeah. and then uh, towards the end, obviously, when you sort of, when Lily goes without the medication and everything, and she almost comes to an acceptance yeah. with regards to the reality of her brother and things like that, yeah. do you think there's that sort of trade-off in terms of accepting what reality is and realising the compromises that need to be made? Move yeah, you know, I was talking about this uh, last night because there was this lady uh, in the Q&A who had epilepsy and she said, you know, um, it was a really good question actually because it challenged um, the way that I felt because I was like, wow, this person has reality. But she said, well, I don't really understand, you know, like, you know, she's drinking all the time and, um, you know, that wouldn't that stop the medication and things like that. And this woman seemed like she was very much not like Lily, like taking care of herself and doing all these things to help her. But I, I feel like as a young person with a condition, and I have a friend who has epilepsy who experienced it in this way, is you're fighting it. You know, you're like, I'm young, like I don't want this, I want to be normal. Like my friend with diabetes, you know, you, you're not supposed to drink when you have diabetes, but you're young and he's going to tell them and you kind of have to create your own boundaries and actually push them to points where you could like really hurt yourself like Lily, you know, I'm going to stop taking all my medication to see what happens because I'm actually in control of going what's going, everything that goes in my body and I'll see that. So I think it's a really interesting thing for young people to see, you know, to about that separation of, you know, child, adult, control, not control kind of thing. Is this your most difficult role? Yeah. So far. Um, <laughs> it's funny because I think every um, role has been a progression. Um, you know, Pusher was like the lead female, but it wasn't, I wasn't like the lead character in a way, which kind of gave me that experience of like um, being heavily involved in a feature. And then this was like 
full on, you know, with what she goes through and everything, and then which was really hard and challenging. But then going on to Sunset Song was next level as well, you know, you know, just on a, a personal and a creative way of growth. So I think like everything is is harder. I think because that you you ha you know what's come before, but you don't know what's ahead. So you know you're working with a director that's inspiring and is working in a different way. That's like oh, oh I didn't even think that that was even possible. Oh I just sit there and do nothing. Oh wow that's really powerful. Do you know what I mean? Like so mm. it's difficult on a way of, or challenging of where you you know, you grow in, like, every time, and I think that's what I just love about it, because it's not, like, the same thing, it's each kind of part is its own separate entity and journey, but on the bigger picture, it's just a progression, <coughs> kind of, yeah. Back to yeah. Um, just going on from what you mentioned earlier, with your role getting harder and harder, yeah. um, could you expand on... Any future product or projects that you're up to or films? Um, yeah, I just finished Sunset Song. Um, well, we finished filming that and just did all. They're in post at the moment, so we just did all the ADR on it and I'm just waiting now to um, for them to like lock it all and it to be totally finished. So and then we'll that I'll start doing all the press for that like early next year and then I have a new project that I start in December. So which is. I'm shooting that in LA, so yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, influences. Are there any kind of influences when you're acting that you look back to or any people that you particularly kind of aspire to be like or any favourite? Um yeah, you know I think if I'm watching like, you know, old films like Grace Kelly or Jay Hepburn, those kind of actors like I really got into them recently because of their sense of like fun and freedom in it like they just seem like there's like a real funness to it and uh, so that's really inspiring mm -hmm. to even in drama and stuff to have that like you know aliveness and that like you know people are really sad and then the next minute they're laughing and so that kind of inspirational thing and how they used to make movies and Oh yeah, like one movie that I was really affected with, Passion of Joan of Arc, that one, you know that? Try it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that was so beautiful mm. and intense and so simple, like obviously because there's no dialogue and how you can communicate, um, you know, physically and um, in a simple way. Is that your stomach? <laughs> <laughs> Does that for you going back to those older films? Then do you think that um, I don't know that the, the female roles were better written or better realised, better portrayed during that era, and it's not so good now? Is that something that you've observed? Um, yeah, it was different. I think like now I feel like it's there's a lot of you know female roles and I think they're a lot more um, you know real and that you like a woman can connect with on a really uh, kind of like strong level I feel like that at the moment right. uh, I feel like it was before not with every film and every director but I think it was like a projection of what a woman should be before which is also great you know as well but um, I think it was more like an oh, aspirational kind of perfect world and a bit more fantasy as in like now, um, you know, with women becoming more prominent in the industry, it's becoming like, no, this is what a woman's like, you know, this is really what women go through and, you know, have to, have to fight for and that's why I enjoy watching, you know, women's roles like that. And is that something you noticed perhaps in script for electricity was that something that came through in the film yeah school? definitely just the rawness of it and how the, the beauty and the ugliness and of what people perceive as um, of, of different things like because even like you know Lily just like pissing herself all the time 
you know, it's just like what mm. happens, you know. Yeah. You know, certain people that have epilepsy, that's just what happens because because of the contract relax, it's like everything relaxes. So then, you know, your bladder relaxes. So and just having that in the film and like it being kind of everything in it had um, a, a valuable part of the story, like the nudity and the rawness and the injury and the, the vulnerability of sex and the intimacy of sex and how epilepsy, like someone's condition can affect that, you know, and, you know, meeting someone and having to, to deal with how you kind of broach the subject. And I just liked like that, how it kind of looked at all these different dynamics because she met so many different people in the film she went through you know this journey of going from Saltburn to you know finding her brothers again to going to London all these characters kind of made her confront something in herself you know that when she's in Saltburn she's kind of like in this kind of bubble this safe bubble you know so yeah we have one last question one last question Oh, there's a big line to make this pressure, isn't it? Oh, wow, I don't know if I've got anything down on here. Um, oh, well, I, I, no, I've got to think of something kind of focused. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a good question. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. It, the, the dialogue and everything feels quite naturalistic. Was, was, there, any, was there any improvisation involved, or was it all scripted? Yeah, there was actually, especially with... Um, were you here when I was talking about Christian and um, oh, no. Paul? So. Oh well, Christian and Polly play my brothers. Um, I knew them before; they were friends of mine. And I got offered the part, and then they messaged me and said, "Oh, you you're doing electricity. We just got offered the part of your brothers." So straight away, I was kind of loving it, and then daunted at the same time because obviously they're so close that I was like, <laughs> "They definitely know how to push my yeah. buttons," and so that added this like depth of intimacy. So mm -hmm. the scenes with you know um, Christian and Paul. You know, were very much kind of became um, became a different thing as we were doing it in more and more takes, and kind of the dialogue changed and came quite colloquial to our relationships and things. So, mm. so that was really really cool, and that was fun because you just didn't know what was going to happen. You know, even the scene, you know, where Christian who plays Mike, he comes and trashes the apartment. I mm. think that was just we just did that as the first take. Are you doing? Like, 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 do that like, one again. Give us half a day to set up. Yeah, <laughs> you know everything because they're like, you know, everything was ripped down and everything, and that was from the moment it kicked off. It was just all we just had to go with it, and you know the end bit of, you know that that dialogue at the end that kind of feels strange and like why are they laughing and after this whole thing and that was like all like improvised that whole thing and even afterwards we were like what happened then and then you felt comfortable to go with that you didn't think oh no he's going to ask us to do it again and go <laughs> stick, to, stick, stick to the script please you know, what are you doing no Brim was it's so happy. like supportive and up for trying anything that was the thing it was so fast paced and it was just like whatever whatever goes and whatever happens even shooting on the streets in London you know it was the general public most of the time so it's kind of like me interacting with just the public and even in the hospital it was people that worked at the hospital like it, you know the scene with when I was getting all the tests done and with um, getting hooked up to the machine it was you know at first Bryn was like oh you know ex wanting them to explain to somebody else how to do it but then he said you know would you mind doing it like just exactly like what you would do so it was literally like, you know, I'm, I'm Lily and I'm going for this procedure that I've had like a million times, but after this big thing that's happened and that whole conversation that we had with the nurses and I actually went through the whole process, like really, um, it was amazing to see what happened with that. And yeah, we just did that once through and it was funny because they were like, if you actually have any kind of epilepsy, you're probably going to have a bit of sign like a waiver <laughs> and stuff. You know, because they do stuff that actually would bring on a seizure in you. So I was like, oh, well, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, they were, those were the fun bits, you know, to feel free. And I was saying before, you know, I got to a stage where I thought, oh, no, I don't know what I'm doing, but it was just, you know, Tom... You know, who, who 
played Al was like I said to him like once he has 